Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sayuta from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team. And I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. To look beautiful and smart at all times is quest of humans right from the beginning of civilization. You all know proper skin protection is the best thing we can do for the health of our skin today and slow down the effects of aging tomorrow. In today's era, changing weather with excessive heat or humidity increases risk of damage due to UV rays, which makes skin more prone to wrinkles, melasma, and even skin cancer. We know that sunscreen is valuable from a skin cancer and sun damage perspective, as well as something that helps prevent fine lines and wrinkles. According to a survey, 67% of people in India are still not using sunscreen as a daily skincare routine. Several things about sunscreen that we people are not aware of and that make us not to include sunscreen as an integral part of our skincare routine. So to keep you informed, today we are here to know more about sunscreen and skincare regimen. So let's connect today with our skin expert, Dr. Satyavan. She is a dermatologist, trichologist, and cosmetologist from Hyderabad. Dr. Satyavati has completed her MBBS from Siddhartha Medical College, Vijayawada, and post-graduation from Andhra Medical College, Vishakhapatna. She has worked as a senior resident in Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Medical College and General Hospital, Sion, and uh, Topiwala National Medical College, Mumbai, Nair Hospital. Currently practicing in her own clinic, Dr. Satya's Skin Care Cosmetic Clinic, LB Nagar, Hyderabad. Today, with her vast expertise in the field of dermatology, Dr. Satyavati will enlighten us on sunscreen usage and its advantages, in, especially during summer season. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Satyavati. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, Doctor, as today we are going to talk about sunscreen, uh, as I have already, you know, uh, told that uh, sunscreen is something which is very essential, but still 67% of people in India are not using it regularly. So, first of all, why should we wear sunscreen every day, Doctor? What's the yeah. significance? Yeah, I'm taking the importance of sunscreen, actually, the importance of sunscreen is uh, it is mainly required for the photo protection and as well as it is useful in preventing photo carcinogenesis and as well as photo aging so the radiation spectrum of uv rays are mainly like the infrared rays uv rays and visible range of rays so here the 49 percent of rays are visible range and uh, 49 percent of rays are uh, infrared rays and uv rays are 7 percent so most uh, uh, like uh, high energy radiation that is mainly blocked by the ozone layer and mainly the UVB rays and UVA rays that is more important. The range of uh, spectrum of UVB rays is like uh, 290 nanometers to 320 nanometers and uh, like UVA rays it is like 320 nanometers to 400 and 400 nanometers. So commonly the UVB radiation is the responsible for the uh, sun band and uh, and as well as skin cancers and the uh, like uva radiation is uh, is like the slow damage of skin right. which is right. and right. Is responsible right. for the uh, uh, skin damage so mainly the like uvb is a high energy radiation and it is uh, like likely to cause immediate damage of the skin that is like sunburn and uh, uva is uh, low radiation and uh, it will leads to like uh, it penetrates deeper into the skin and it leads to long term skin damage. That is the UV A rays. So, mainly there are so many types of sunscreens which are available that is like physical sunscreens as well as chemical sunscreens. So, that depends on the uh, skin type you have to choose the sunscreen. Is it like adults are using or children are using? So, uh, mainly like the sunscreens are inorganic sunscreens, they are nothing but physical sunscreens. And the organic sunscreens are not, uh, nothing but chemical sunscreens. So in, in organic sunscreens, the physical uh, inorganic sunscreen, the components are mainly zinc oxide as well as titanium dioxide. So the zinc oxide, in, it mainly protects from the UVB rays. And the titanium dioxide, it protects mainly from the UVA rays. So the, it is, uh, the physical sunscreens are not popular because uh, the it's uh, like aesthetic appearance and uh, as well as like uh, it's uh, 
the when you are applying it like white cast will be there so in chemical sunscreens like avobenzone and oxybenzone are the common uh, chemical agents we will use actually so these are the like uh, cosmetically acceptable sunscreens and uh, we commonly use like uh, uh, chemical sunscreens we are the commonly used sunscreens the physical sunscreens we uh, advise usually for the children and uh, as well as for the patients who are allergic to the chemical sunscreen we can advise them for the physical sunscreens because uh, the physical sunscreen are the safest for the children because zinc oxide and titanium dioxide they are, they are the protection for the uh, uh, protective uh, agents in the physical sunscreens and these are the inorganic sunscreens so there is no harm for the children as well as the patient who are allergic to the chemical sunscreen also they can we can advise the uh, like physical sunscreens and then i i will tell you the ideal sunscreen what should be the contents it, uh, it will be present in ideal sunscreen so ideal sunscreen it should be combination of the both like uh, uva protection as well as uvb protection it should be there and uh, as well as broad spectrum coverage it should be there and as well as, well as it should be non allergenic it should be non irritant and it should be like cosmetically elegant as well as it should be hypoallergenic and uh, the it should be like uh, it should have physical as well as chemical agents of the uh, sunscreen so this Fair. is the ideal sunscreen and as well right. as it should be economical to the patients so, so that patients can easily buy the sunscreen and they can use the sunscreen this is the ideal quantity of the sunscreen actually right and doctor the thing is that uh, we have a general conception that sunscreen is something that protects us from the harmful radiations of sun but as you said you know apart from uva and uvb there are infrared and other uh, you know radiations that are equally damaging to our skin now there are many people uh, whose uh, you know exposure under the sun is very minimum uh, who barely go out or who are working from home or uh, working from offices or commuting through car which is air conditions etc and they normally say that you know my exposure under the sun is very less so why should i wear sunscreen so my question to you is irrespective of what our working culture is what's our exposure under sun is it uh, mandatory to use uh, sunscreen yes definitely because the sun uh, the uv rays ultraviolet rays it passes from the glasses as well as the from clouds as well as like uh, even rainy season also even winter season also in summer we have to use the sunscreen because the uv rays it passes from the clouds even in the glasses even we are in the indoors also we have to apply the sunscreen like uh, compulsory we have to repeat the sunscreen every two hourly and we have to use the sunscreen i'll i'll tell you how much quantity of sunscreen we have to apply like uh, for the face and neck we have to apply 2 2 uh, mg of sunscreen in uh, centimeter square in place otherwise we can take the like this uh, to pick the tip of uh, quantity of sunscreen for the face and neck if patient are applying like face neck as well as like hands they can take like uh, one half tablespoon of uh, quantity of sunscreen so this is that is uh, sufficient for the face as well as hands as well as neck if they are applying for the legs and uh, as well as for the hands and chest they can take the full tablespoon quantity of the sunscreen and they can apply if the patient saying that they are applying the sunscreen if they are not applying the like uh, uh, quantity of sunscreen not if, uh, not sufficient then there is no protection from the uh, uv rays okay. so they have to apply like uh, 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 they have to apply proper amount of sunscreen then only the protection will be there from the uv rays right so it's important to apply sunscreen religiously and it's also important to take care that how much sunscreen you are applying applying yes. adequate or sufficient quantity is equally important otherwise it's of no use uh, you have uh, told us that you know how much is uh, adequate for our skin uh but we would also like to know doctor because it said that you know it's important to reapply sunscreen every 3 4 hours or 2 3 hours or um, it's also important that if we are going out then we need to apply sunscreen little before so what's uh, this all about please shed some more light on that yes, as well yes yeah 
actually in the sunscreen there is there will be the sun protection factor it will be there like like low spf sun spf means sun protection factor so low spf medium spf high and highest so low is the sun protection factor is nothing but 2 to 15% of sun protection factor and in medium it will be like 15 to 30% of sun protection factor in 30 to 50 it is the uh, it is like uh, high protection factor and more than 50 is the highest uh, sun protection factor so the indian skin type we have to use more than 30 sun protection factor sunscreen then only the protection will be there there's so many sunscreens in the market it will be available like 2 to 15 percent of sunscreen also it, it will be available but there is there is no such protection will be there uh, for the indian skin type so indian skin type we have to use like more than 30 sun protection factors should be there and the all the like all kinds of people they can use the sunscreens the indications of sunscreens i'll tell you like uh, like photo aging and uh, like photomorphic light eruption even acne and as well as uh, post inflammatory hyperpigmentation if patients are using like deep pigmentation agents like like hydroquinone or uh, it can be like uh, uh, retinoin or uh, it can be like uh, it can be like glycolic acid if they are using and if they not apply the sunscreen then the post inflammatory hyperpigment patient hyperpigmentation will be more because the uv rays it will passes easily from the uh, skin and then it will damage more to the skin so they have to apply sunscreen even for the like uh, normal even acne also they can use and uh, so many like photomorphic light eruption and even uh, lupus erythematosus even albinism patient if the albinism patient they have to apply the sunscreen because they are more prone for the like skin cancers and uh, skin cancer so they can apply the sunscreen overall body also so okay. like uh, like photomorphic light eruption is a uh, common thing then they have to apply the sunscreen these are the few indications of uh, sunscreen usage Right. Very well uh, elaborated, doctor. But then there are people who will keep on complaining that, you know, my skin become very dull when I use sunscreen or it becomes very patchy, oily, or uh, I don't like the white cast that, it, you know, causes on my skin. And there are n number of excuses or complaints that people know, generally, you know, uh, give not to use sunscreen on a regular basis. Uh, how do you address all these complaints and reasonings? Yeah. Actually, physical sunscreens, white, white cards will be there. So those the sunscreens are unpopular. So we are coming with the like both UVA spectrum has well physical as well as chemical agents. These are the acceptable sunscreen. Those are the popular sunscreens nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so many sunscreens uh, in market, it will be available. The protection factor they will not maintain. So they have to such they have to take from the like dermatologist opinion. So they could they only suggest the gel form sunscreens or lotion form sunscreens and they have to see if what kind of sunscreen they will need and as well as like uh, that depending on the skin condition if they came for the like melasma if they came for the uh, acne if they came for the acne then they have to use the lotion form of sunscreens or gel form of sunscreens and the uh, like uh, uh, even for the melasma they have to apply the sunscreen like a regular basis for every two hourly uh, protection, they have to need the sunscreen and the sunscreen, it will be like 30 to 50 SPF uh, sunscreen they have to apply. Right. So uh, it is really important to use sunscreen regularly, religiously, the right amount, reapplication at all matters. Um, so there is a viewer, John Vergas, who is asking, what is broad spectrum sunscreen? Is it different from the normal sunscreen, doctor? The broad spectrum sunscreen is nothing but both the uh, yeah, UPA the coverage as well as ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B coverage. So that is a broad spectrum sunscreen. The UPA coverage is there, then that is the like narrow band. And the broad band is both coverage will be there, like physical as well as chemical. Uh, that That's what I told you. The ideal sunscreen should cover UPA protection as well as UPB protection. That is the broad spectrum of uh, uh, protection. 
Right. Now, Doctor, as you were explaining the physical and chemical sunscreen, the organic and inorganic sunscreen, you said that, uh, you know, uh, physical sunscreens are one that even children can use. Now, my question is, is it um, okay to use uh, sunscreen or apply sunscreen over children? Because, of course, their uh, exposure under the sun is great. It's very much. So, is it absolutely safe? Yes, actually... Uh, the eight children in sunscreens, the usually less than six months of age will not recommend the sunscreen because okay. the percutaneous absorption of the sunscreen will be there and there is no studies is that like less than six months of age they can use the sunscreen. But more than six months they have, they can use the sunscreen and so many sunscreen for the children, they are uh, available in the market but we have to use the physical sunscreens for the children because those are the safest sunscreen for the children and will not suggest the chemical sunscreens for the children, actually. Right. And again, to, uh, you know, choose the right sunscreen for ourselves or our children, we can go and consult a qualified dermatologist because they'll know our skin type uh, and they'll, of course, understand our working condition, etc. And as for that, they can suggest the right sunscreen for us. Uh, one more viewer with us, Kirti Kapoor asking, since I lead a very busy life, I need to keep my routine really simple. What are the absolute skincare basics, doctor? Definitely. Actually, skincare tips is that we have to uh, use like good face wash and after the face wash, they have to apply the moisturizer and after the moisturizer in the morning, they have to apply the sunscreen of adequate quantity like I already told you, like half teaspoon of uh, sunscreen is uh, required for the face as well as neck and as well as for the hands. And if, if they are uh, applying like for the body, like legs also, they can take the like full te uh, teaspoon of uh, uh, sunscreen. So otherwise they can take 3 ml of sunscreen, 3 ml of sunscreen for the face, neck and hands and 6 ml for the like uh, uh, legs and as well as face and uh, like the uh, chest area. So, for this, uh, definitely they can use the sunscreen in the mornings over the moisturizer and in the night they have to apply the moisturizer and as well as like the vitamin C serum for the maintenance and as well as like so many serums are available actually and uh, they can apply the vitamin C serums in the night for the maintenance therapy to improve the like appearance of the uh, appearance of the skin as well as to reduce the prickles over the forehead and uh, uh, like the cosmetic appearance. Right. So these are the absolute basic, the absolute skincare basics which we can go for. But yes, uh, sunscreen is a must. Uh, now the thing is, doctor, many a times, you know, there are athletes, swimmers, or uh, when we are going out for vacations, uh, for some beach vacation, or even uh, on mountains, because hilly areas, the sun is really harsh there, even if it's not that way visible, but it's there. Um, what uh, precautions we can take or, you know, what kind of sunscreen we should choose for these, you know, special areas if we are athlete because we are sweating a lot and the sunscreeners, you know, uh, it get washed away or swimmers or for people who are vacationing. Actually, uh, yeah, for the uh, swimmers and as well as for the vacation, they, if they are going, they have to take the sunscreen definitely. And uh, even with the sunscreen, they have to like protective clothing is very important and they have to use white glosses and white brimmed hat uh, for the protection and they have to repeat the sunscreen every two hours if they are uh, outdoors and uh, they use the uh, like required uh, uh, amount of quantity of the sunscreen like under liberal quantity of the sunscreen uh, they have to use and the uh, sunscreen uh, they, they they have to use like wide, uh, wide uh, spectrum of sunscreen they have to use. If they are using the physical sunscreen, then there is uh, protection will be not there. So they have to choose wide spectrum of sunscreen that is broad spectrum of sunscreen, both coverage of UVA and as well as UVB range, as well as infrared range and as well as visible range of uh, protection will be uh, there. And uh, like uh, after the immediate after swimming, they have to apply the uh, sunscreen and, uh, and uh, like uh, like clothing it's very important for protective clothing and uh, yes. right so physical barriers uh, you know for sun protection can add 
to our uh, sunscreen protection um, uh, yeah. regimen we can say okay but uh, sunscreen again is very important even if you are going for a wide brimmed hat or scarves etc you need to apply sunscreen regularly or religiously yeah. yes yes and the sunscreen it uh, leads to few patients will ask us like vitamin d deficiency if they are applying the And the because UV rays is the most important for the vitamin D synthesis. So right. if they 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 last uh, we are using the sunscreen if the deficiency will of uh, vitamin D is there. No, actually we are using the sunscreen uh, like for the face as well as the exposed areas of the uh, like uh, sun. So vitamin D synthesis uh, will be there for the it will usually ten to four. We are telling to apply the sunscreen actually mm -hmm. for the vitamin D synthesis. It will be there like eight to ten a.m. in the morning. So right. definitely they can use the sunscreen by ten to four p.m. in between every two hourly they have to repeat it. So there is no such uh, like uh, there is no such. Uh, uh, Regular, there uh, there is no such deficiency of uh, vitamin D is there if they are patient patient are use, using regular sunscreen. Right. Um, even though that... it, even though they are applying regularly every two hourly, even in the indoors, if they are applying, there is no such deficiency of vitamin D is there. But few other says that uh, like a little bit deficiency will be there. But like in the market, so many uh, like vitamin D uh, uh, this. Uh, Uh, syrups are coming and vitamin D mm. like uh, uh, lotions are also coming in the market and the, so many juices are coming with the like mm. uh, with the vitamin D supplement uh, supplementation and they can take uh, once in a week uh, vitamin D supplementation for the eight weeks if they require. Right, exactly. So I'm glad that you boosted this myth because many a time people often, you know, uh, say that uh, we don't want to use sunscreen because then we'll get vitamin D deficiency. So there's nothing, uh, yeah, there's no relation from of uh, vitamin D deficiency and using sunscreen. I'll take few more questions from our viewers. Uh, okay, Pawan Parse is here asking is. Applying sunscreen at night is also uh, required. It's, uh, it's going to be beneficial. No, actually, no needed of sunscreen in the night because the sun, the UV rays, it will be there. The more UV rays, it like ten o'clock to four p.m. So maximum you can apply till five p.m. There is no need of uh, your sunscreen in the night actually because okay. there is no ultraviolet radiation. And if they are uh, in front of like laptop and this thing. Even though in the night there is no need of sunscreen, actually in the daytime definitely they have to. Okay, and uh, Faria Beg is here asking: Is it possible to get a sunburn if it's cloudy uh, during summers? Yes, yes, definitely because that's what I told you. Like the uh, UV rays, it passes from the clouds and it passes from the glasses. Even we are in the indoors, they have to apply the sunscreen because UV rays it will passes from the clouds also. So they have to apply the sunscreen even in the indoors, even in the cloudy area, even it can be rainy season, it can be winter season, or it can. You have to apply the sunscreen in the summer definitely, but even rainy season, winter season, whatever it can be, we have to apply the sunscreen because the UV rays definitely it passes from the clouds and as well as glasses and everything. Right, and as you were telling doctor that you know one should choose sunscreen as per their skin type, as per their routine, work routine, etc., as per the exposure, etc. Now the thing is that you know we would like you to shed some more light over this. You know how to choose a sunscreen as per our skin type. For example, if somebody is having a dry skin or a normal or a combination or an oily skin, how to choose what formulation of sunscreen we can go for? Yeah. will take the acne first if the acne like uh, like if it is like uh, a dry skin condition on oily skin condition will take for dry skin condition so for the dry skin condition they have to go for the lotion form of sunscreens and if it is like oily form of uh, skin condition they have to go for the gel form of sunscreens because so many sunscreens uh, are available in the market But the thing is, depending on the skin, this is what kind, what problem patient came actually for the acne they came, or for the melasma they came, or for the photomorphic light eruptions, or uh, it's the concern for the patient, or they came for the just cosmetic appearance, or they came for the like uh, wrinkles or the face. That depends on the patient for 
what they require depending on that we have to choose the sunscreen the minimum sunscreen it will be more than 30 spf for the indian skin type so depending on that we have to choose is the lotion form of sunscreen or the gel form of sunscreen or uh, depending on the cream form of so many of sunscreens are available so depending on the skin condition we have to choose the sunscreen actually right so depending on our skin type we can choose the right kind of sunscreen whether we want cream based lotion based yeah uh, definitely that is all just only assess the sunscreen in front of them they only they suggest the like what kind of uh, skin type their skin type and then only they can suggest the sunscreen right so it's always advisable to go and consult a dermat a qualified dermat uh, so that you can get the right kind of you know uh, advice on your skin type as well and what sunscreen will suit you uh, now the thing is that uh, the you know the there are so many influencers on social media these days uh, there are so many ads this market gimmick is there and quacks are also there now we as a layman and as a you know uh, consumer is really confused and we are flooded with products we are flooded with sunscreens yeah. definitely there are uh, medicated sunscreen plus there are you know uh, sunscreens which are uh, brand based plus there are makeup products cosmetic products also claiming that they have some spf in them and they'll protect us from uh, the harmful effects of the sun or other uh, radiations now the thing is where to go doctor I and mean, how to choose again the right thing because there is so much uh, on the uh, display these days actually there are so many makeup products in the uh, market they are coming with the sunscreen they we have the ma'am we are using the sunscreen which have the 15 spf for 30 spf for right. two uh, two spf they said but the protection will be not there and the those sunscreens are not fda approved in the market there are so many sunscreens that they are coming but there is no not fda approved there is no studies for that sunscreens the how much protection it will be there the, uh, nobody knows for that but our definitely our sunscreen have the protect uh, the they, they will follow the sun protection factor they have to maintain the broad range of sunscreen they have to maintain the physical physical sunscreen as well as chemical sunscreens they have to maintain and the sun protection factor it will be there for the like the medicated one but the, in the market they 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 launch the sunscreen but there is no fda approval there is no uh, any such factor actually for the sunscreen the booster rating is very important so uva protection depending on the uva protection they will uh, give the booster uh, rating minimum star rating it will be the four the four sun uh, the booster rating if it, it will be four then it will be the good sunscreen actually they only like in the market they will not give any star rating they will not mention the sun protection factor and how protection it will be there that nobody knows actually in the market the what they launched the sunscreen fair enough and as initially you was uh, you were telling us that there are so many things but there are some basics that we should actually look for when we are going out to buy a sunscreen like it, like it should be broad spectrum or you know what other things yeah, are yeah it there. should be less irritant it should be hypoallergenic yes uh, i'm asking this again reality. doctor because there are so many informations on the box right when we go for buy a uh, uh, right sunscreen for us we would like you to uh, you know explain us one more that what are the things that we should look for when we are going out to buy a sunscreen for us the ideal sunscreen it should be the combination of physical as well as chemical sunscreen and it should be broad coverage of uh, protection like uva as well as uvb the sunscreen should be hypoallergenic the sunscreen should be less irritant the sunscreen should be non comedogenic and uh, it uh, it uh, the cosmetically acceptable and the less irritation and as well as economical range of sunscreen it will be there definitely they have to use the sunscreen continuously definitely it will be like if it is economical they, then only they can use the sunscreen regularly so right. that is also very important exactly so because that is the ideal sunscreen definitely because we are using it regularly and reapplication is equally for important for us really like yeah, yeah exactly and uh, uh, experts also say that sunscreen is also an anti aging product you know it will keep you young your skin young how yes. yeah sunscreen i'll tell you sunscreen in photo aging 
the actually the uva and uvb protection it will be not there if patient are not applying the sunscreen regularly then what will happen is the uv rays it penetrates deeper into the skin every time so it will uh, destroy the collagen as well as elastic fibers or in the skin so collagen elastin is main uh, requirement for the like appearance of the uh, skin if it the deficiency of the collagen elastin is there definitely the wrinkles will be the most common thing then we can see the uh, commonly the patient are applying regular sunscreen then uh, the wrinkles and uh, this photo aging appearance will be late if the patient is not applying the sunscreen definitely in 30s to 40 years only they can see the melasma over the face as well as wrinkles over the face and uh, like post inflammatory hyperpigmentation over the face so we commonly see so the sunscreen is the main uh, uh, protection factor it will be the, uh, the main thing for the photo protection as well as photo carcinogenesis also right now uh, as you were also telling that it is also important for people who are acne prone or have acne to use sunscreen another thing is that you know treating acne is uh, um, is okay but then treating these scars and treating the dark spots it becomes really tough so uh, by using sunscreen regularly even if we are having acne uh, will it help us uh, maintaining a better uh, skin and you know getting rid of those marks and uh, blemishes definitely actually in the acne it is nothing but sebaceous gland disorder so okay. in teenagers definitely everyone get the acne so usually what they will do is they will pick the skin and they then the post inflammatory hyperpigmentation is more common for the acne patients so definitely we have to suggest them the sunscreen then it will reduce the post inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well as for the scars also they can reduce if they not pick the skin they will not touch the like acne the post inflammatory hyperpigmentation will be less as well as the scars of uh, post inflammatory scars are will be less for the acne patients so definitely we have to suggest the sunscreens for them depending on the skin type like the, if they came for the like oily uh, oily skin condition or uh, it is like a dry skin condition depending on that we have to suggest the sunscreen for them but they have to apply the sunscreen like continuously even for the like fading of the post inflammatory hyperpigmentation they have to continue after that, that also if the pigmentation is there they are using the sunscreen if they stop the sunscreen again then definitely it will come to again pigmentation it will start for okay. that so even for those who are having acne or have acne prone skin please religiously uh, apply sunscreen as per your skin type and of course take advice from an uh from a qualified dermatologist now uh, we would also like to talk about those who suffer from melasma doctor because again melasma is very common in our society especially in women now the thing is that we often uh, hear that you know to prevent melasma it's important to uh, you know use sunscreen uh, regularly how it helps actually melasma is nothing but browny pigmentation or hyperpigmentation over the cheeks as well as nose as well as over the forehead and few patient will get the uh, pigmentation over the chin area and the few patients will we are commonly seeing the pigmentation over the like hands also they are getting the melasma so mm -hmm. this is nothing but photo aging disorder so the the common causes of melasma is that like uh, the patient is having thyroid disorder the patient is having hormonal disturbances the patient is having any genetic disorder like the mother is having the melasma the kind of first then uh, then the daughter also or kids also getting the melasma more the genetic tendency will be there for the uh, melasma actually so they have to apply the even melasma it's like two kinds of melasma is there like epidermal as well as dermal if it is like browny pigmentation is there then it will be uh, it, it will be like epidermal melasma if it is like deep like black pigmentation will be there it will be till dermis it will be the pigmentation will be there so for the epidermal melasma easily you can read with the medical management and for the it will be like if it is deep to the dermis or subcutaneous tissue then we have to go for the medical management as well as like a procedure uh, treatment like chemical peels and as well as laser treatment for them so the melasma they have to apply the sunscreen for long term uh, treatment 
and uh, they will, if they stop the sunscreen again it will come the like they, then again recurrence of the melasma it will be there then we have to tell the patient like they have to apply the sunscreen continuously and the initial depigmentation is in for one to two months and then they have to continue the sunscreen with the non steroidal depigmentation agents for the life long okay so uh, for those who are prone or are at risk of having melasma who have a family history who are pregnant etc they uh, should uh, definitely use sunscreen as a preventive measure and plus in case uh, you are suffering from melasma so you'll have to use uh, sunscreen as a treatment as well which will be advised by your your dermat Yeah, obviously, and for melasma uh, sufferers, uh, we often say that you know tinted sunscreens are there. They are really beneficial. What are these tinted sunscreens? Doctor? The tinted sunscreens is nothing but uh, like physical sunscreens that I told you. The protection will be more for the tinted sunscreens, like uh, zinc oxide as well as titanium dioxide is there in the physical sunscreens, and the avobenzone, oxybenzone will be there in the chemical sunscreens. So nowadays, it coming has the both spectrum coverage of the sunscreens. So that is the cosmetically acceptable. The tinted sunscreens, it is there like more than fifty uh, SPF will be there. Then it is more protection for the melasma kind of uh, thing actually. And then I will tell you the few tips of the uh, sunscreen usage and as well as photo protection. Yes. Actually, the regular sunscreen use uh, to prevent the skin cancer, it is. the the more, most important point has been as the daily spf 30 is uh, recommended uh, for the every uh, indian uh, population and uh, as well as it, they have to apply the sunscreen uniformly if they are applying in a uh, like a patchy patchy for sunscreen then there is no protection will be there they have to apply uniform uh, uniformly over the uh, face neck as well as sun exposed areas and uh, they have to uh, they have to apply it every two hourly like they have to apply it most often like uh, sunscreen if in if we, uh, they are indoors or outdoors and uh, they have to uh, avoid the sun in between 10 o'clock to uh, uh, 4 pm if like possible they can uh, avoid the sun and uh, they have to use the sunglasses as well as the wide brim hat and uh, as well as uh, they can use the protective clothing uh, to protect the uh, uv rays these are the few tips of the sun uh, the uv rays damage to the skin edge right and doctor um, because we are uh, using sunscreen for the longest time we are using sunscreen regularly re repeating the application as well every day so the sunscreen is going to be our second skin in a way right so my question to you is because many people keep asking that is it safe to use sunscreen this long uh, and you know for uh, so many times in a day is it uh, is it not toxic is it absolutely safe no actually definitely they have to use the sunscreen most oftenly and because there is no such toxic kind of uh, uh, any damage is there for the skin because this is these are the sun protection factor they have to uh, the authors whatever they study the sunscreen there is not not such kind of any toxic kind of uh, thing is reported till now if the patients are using the sunscreen if uh, there is no such kind of uh, toxicity will be there but definitely the vitamin d synthesis little bit deficiency will be there then they have to take oral tablets or uh, like liquids they can take the like supplementation of vitamin d synthesis but definitely taking uh, the if they are applying the sunscreen definitely like uh, skin cancers will be uh, prevented like squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma and uh, even actinic keratosis the patients are not using the sunscreen they are commonly get the actinic keratosis the actinic keratosis is nothing but pre cancerous condition so they have to apply the sunscreen com- compulsory then only they can prevent the even cancer also so the protection will be more for the sunscreen there is no right. such toxicity till now reported actually okay so it's absolutely safe and yeah, they can uh, use even life longer more than 6 months of children also we are suggesting the sunscreen 
less than 6 months were not suggesting the sunscreen because the percutaneous absorption of the sunscreen will be there and there is no such studies are there for the children the children less than 6 months of age at Okay, doctor. And uh, we are about to sum up the whole session. Anything, any take-home message for our viewers, doctor? Yeah, definitely. The take-home message is that the sunscreen is very important for the photo protection, photo carcinogenesis, and photo aging. So we have to apply the required quantity of the sunscreen. The must apply, uh, apply often. And the minimum sun protection factor we have to see like 30 to 50 SPF. And uh, they, uh, they are using the sunscreen even though they can use the sunglasses and protective clothing as well as the wide brim hat for the protection if they are going outdoors. Right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Satyavati, for your valuable time, ma'am. It has been a very informative session for our viewers and it was thank wonderful you. hearing you. Thank you so very much. And viewers, thank you for your active participation in today's session. Stay connected to our beautiful spotless skin page. Thank you. Have a great day ahead. Stay healthy. Stay spotless. Keep glowing. Goodbye.